Let's start in the history of psychology and let's go way, way back. We're talking pre civilization, hunter gatherer lifestyle back. Even then, people were coming up with theories, trying to explain the world around them and be able to predict things in the future. Because if you can predict where your next meal is coming from, you're a lot better off than just stumbling on it blindly for your entire life. Okay, so one of the early views is this view of animism. This basically says that all of nature is alive. So this includes the rocks, the oceans, the sky, the celestial bodies, sun, moon, stars, whatever. Everything is alive. An extension of this is the anthropomorphic view. Not only is everything alive around you, so the rocks, the ocean, the what have you, but we attach human things, human qualities to these non-human things. The volcano that you live near is no longer just alive and periodically gets indigestion or something, but you also attribute human qualities to it. The volcano is exploding. We must have made it mad somehow. We need to appease it so it stops and so maybe we can live in peace for some time. If you live near the ocean, same sort of thing. You want to keep the ocean happy so you don't have a typhoon or something else come and try to wipe you out. You see this basically for wherever the people live near, in the Fertile Crescent. You want to keep the, the rivers happy and keep the rain coming to feed your crops, and you don't want a drought. So you try to do what you can for what you think is causing those different environmental things to happen. This results in things like ghosts, spirits, demons, agents that you can interact with to try to keep your family alive. The extension from anthropomorphism, then, is magic. This is where we attempt to control nature in our favor. This is a way to intervene with the demons, ghosts, spirits, what have you. You start doing rituals to try to keep the demons away, keep the spirits happy, maybe even ancestors happy. This is actually how some alternate medicine treatments, quote-unquote, work. You have an imbalance of humors in your body, and so you need to wear this magic amulet to keep the demons away and your humors will go back to normal. Unfortunately, those are still on sale today. Largely, these are probably based on some illusory cause-effect relationships. So you've had a drought going on for some time and you decide, okay, this, we have to do something, anything to try to fix this because we're starving. So you do some sort of ritual and then at some time interval later, you get rain. And so you think, oh, whatever we did helped. Our actions caused whatever spirit, agent, entity, whatever, to take pity on us. Or we made them happy, or it was an apology. You know, whatever it was, it fixed the situation. So when we have a drought in the future, we can do this act. Hey, maybe we can even do it as a preventative thing. If we keep doing this ritual, maybe we won't have droughts in the future. And that's it for the early stuff. Let's go into the ancient Greeks in the next video.